If you've been following along, you know that I am working on a dress to wear at a wedding at the end of the summer. Instead of jumping into a big ambitious project the way that I really want to, I'm breaking this down into parts and making sure those parts work correctly before knitting the final dress. In the last video, I drafted a pattern for a two-gourd skirt that fits kind of like an A-line skirt, and it went pretty well, but it's got some issues with the hem. So in this video, I'm going to fix those issues and then knit a fuller four-gourd skirt with the resulting pattern. I'm working with a great quantity of fingering weight bamboo that I got from Color Mart. That should get me through the prototyping phase of this project. I love the way that this yarn drapes. Okay, let me walk you through how I'm fixing the skirt pattern. The problem with the first skirt was that the side came to a point. So we have our trapezoid panel, and then when you attach another trapezoid panel to it, you wind up with this point here, and I don't want that in the final garment. If this were a sewing pattern, we would just round out these edges and then make sure that this seam here made sense. But because this is a knitting pattern, I'm going to add short row shaping to the bottom. So it'll shape down like this and then across and then up, and we'll wind up with a shape that's something like this with these being short row shaped. The way that we're gonna do that is we know that we have a trapezoid here and I want this to be a right angle, but it's not right now. And from my pattern, I know what the decrease cadence is on this side. So if we were just draw a right angle here, um, I know what this angle is from my pattern. So I can just take this triangle shape, if I were to flip it down, and as long as these two angles are the same, this here will be a right angle. So I'm going to refactor my trapezoid abstraction and pull out the function that finds this cadence here so I can reuse it. The decrease cadence vertically is done in terms of number of rows and we will have to calculate the short row distance here in terms of stitches but it's an easy conversion once we have a gauge swatch and then i'm probably going to short row about a third of the way in and make my hem that way if we were to extrapolate out from a two gore pattern to an n gore pattern we're always going to wind up with some kind of oddly shaped polygon. And like, that's fine if that's what you're going for, but I want <laughs> a circle skirt. I don't want a polygon skirt. This is my pattern generator website. It's hosted on a platform called Glitch that hosts React.js websites and various other things, but I use it for React. I have a bunch of abstractions that I work with so they don't have to recreate stuff over and over again. One of those is a trapezoid. The thing that I need to pull out is this change here. That is the cadence of decreases that we are finding. And there's a bunch of math here, but let me quickly start with end with these percent and then gauge stitches and gauge rows. Let's form my you. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Okay, so I'm just gonna copy paste all this. I'm gonna regret this. Epsilon we don't need. Let's see, we're converting the start width to stitches. And then we are getting the distance between the start width and the end width, which is the delta, which it's gonna be the difference between the number of stitches at the bottom of the trapezoid and the number of stitches at the top of the trapezoid and then increases or decreases. We don't actually need this. And I'm not gonna take the absolute value of the change. I just wanna return that raw so I can work with it. And we don't need the end stitches here. We just need the cadence. Okay. So this is going to find the number of stitches you're starting with, the length in rows, and then calculate the difference between the two and this just converts it to an int because all number types in JavaScript are floating point, meaning they are 
They have decimal points. And then cadence becomes... Now let's just call it trapezoid change change cadence because it may be increases or decreases depending on whether or not the cadence is positive. So our cadence is going to be the absolute value of, what did I call it? <laughs> Trapezoid change cadence, and these are all the values it needs. Format you. Cool. Now let's double check that this works by looking at one of the patterns, yes. And it's not working correctly. Let's see. Show me errors. Convert to stitches. Uh, one of my utility functions is attached to an object. I should refactor that. Am I gonna refactor that now? No, I'll do it later. I'm not gonna refactor this too much. I'm just gonna get it up and working. And you'll be a local function. Yes, and this is just a default value for the ease percent. Yes. Let's put you at the end so you don't cause problems. Yes, yes, I see you. And then ease percent goes here. Why are you unhappy now? Can I read properties of undefined reading convert to stitch? And that cup happens at line 30. Are you line 30? Oh, because this is not defined because it's a function call and not an object. Stitches and convert to rows actually works the same way. There we go. All right, close you for now. And the gourd skirt works correctly again. 132 rows. Yeah. Okay. Successfully refactored an abstraction. Huzzah! And now, what was I gonna do with that? I'm going to go back over to the gourd skirt. And then inside of here, on each side, I wanna do the shaping. All right, we'll come back to this. It's done. I put the hem shaping in its own component. And what I'm doing here is I'm getting the side cadence I'm converting it from rows to stitches, and that is gonna be the cadence of short rows. And then text to render it all correctly, and this is what it looks like in the pattern. Come on. Uh, let's take that back down too so you can see it. So stitches into hold, and then the cadence for short rowing out. I just need to test it and make sure it makes sense. And now you know how I draft my patterns. Is this interesting? Does anyone see the code the way that I do? Like, yes, it's math, and yes, it's assumptions, but also like, I don't know, I look at this and I see the geometry, and I know what it's gonna look like when it's done. I don't know, let me know in the comments what you think of this kind of explanation of pattern drafting. So I got through most of the of one gore before I realized that I had done some of the math wrong. When you do a short row, that decrease includes two rows because you have to bring the carriage across and then back. So I just need to multiply my bottom cadence by two and then it's fixed. The bottom of the panel starts the same way with an E-wrap cast on across the whole bed. Remember to hang some weights. We'll only need them for a few rows, but we do need them. Knit one row, and then we'll start the short rows. I'm bringing a third of the needles on the opposite side of the carriage into hold, then knitting one row. Wrap the last needle, and then bring the other third of the needles out into hold on the other side. Knit one more row. Don't forget to wrap the last needle. From here, we start short rowing out at the cadence that the pattern says. The hardest part about this is managing the weight because this starts to create a pocket. You may need to get creative with this. I'm using weights for my bulky machine.
I left the original cast on comb attached to the work and I found that the weights would occasionally get stuck on it as the pocket got bigger. This process continues until all of the needles are back in work. When you finish the hem, it's time to reset all of the weights because we're going back to plain knitting. Make sure they're hung evenly along the bed and don't rely on the original cast on comb. It's not going to make any sense anymore. Then we knit and decrease as we go. This skirt doesn't have any hip shaping because it's already going to be big enough at the hips. When you get to the top of the skirt, take the whole thing off on waist yarn. We'll do the waistband later. And we'll need four of these. Rehang as many panels as possible back on the machine. For this skirt, that's going to be two, so I'm starting at the center. This goes much faster if you can pick up multiple stitches. Make sure to overlap one stitch where the two panels meet. Now, don't do what I did here. I completely forgot to add weights. Luckily, I caught on after a few rows. Nothing bad happens. Even if something bad happens at this point, the waste yarn is still on, so you can take the whole thing off the machine and redo it. I like to knit my waistbands at a slightly tighter tension. Leave a long tail for a stretchy seam and then take the whole thing off on waist yarn. Here we go. I'm starting with the waistband seam. This is essentially a Kitchener stitch into the back of the top of the skirt. It's easier to see what you're doing with the waist yarn in the skirt. This takes forever, and I always wonder why I do it, but it's a really nice finish and a very stretchy seam. Pull off the waist yarn. Then mattress stitch the two gores together at the center.
Here's the final skirt, washed and blocked. I did the waistband the same as the other skirt, but this time I cut the elastic a little bit shorter because this skirt is actually fairly heavy. I think it took at least a pound of yarn to make it this full, um, but it's staying up nice where it is. So we have fixed the problem where the gores meet and we're no longer getting these points and it looks more like a circle skirt than it does something angular. Um, I think I'm happy with this. I think this is what is going to go into the final dress. And it really moves. I've never seen a knit move like this. It is lovely. This one's knit at a slightly tighter tension, so I'm going to wear it for a while and see how it wears before I make the final decision, but I think it's going to stay a lot like this. Yeah, the pattern for this is up on my website, though I'm updating it as I go and it may not still look like this when you get to it. This is just the skirt part of the dress that I'm making to wear to a wedding at the end of the summer. So subscribe and stick around to see the rest of it when it's finished. I'm going to start working on the top and we're going to see how that goes. Thanks for watching. Happy knitting.